Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Quick Monday video here where I'll do a little bit of housekeeping items on an upcoming collaboration where I'll be hanging out on the channel. And then I'll talk briefly about the CSC card show that happened this past weekend. Show off the handful of items, two items here that I picked up at that show. And then we'll send you on your merry way. So first of all, I'm going to be this upcoming Wednesday, I'm going to be on the Pittsburgh YouTube channel. And I'll include a link to that in the description. Uh, it's going to be a live stream, I think 10 p.m. Eastern time. And the guys will have whatever agenda they have. I don't have too much uh, leadway on that, but we'll talk about whatever they want to chat about or whatever questions they might have or topics they want to discuss. Should be a lot of fun. So hopefully you'll be able to join us as far as that's concerned. And like I said, I'll include a link to that in the description. Now, as far as the CSC show is concerned, I've been to a few of those now, uh, a couple of different locations that they've done. And it's been a bit of a mixed bag depending on the location. Uh, they went back to the Mississauga Convention Center, which is actually a pretty good spot for them. They've done very well with it. It's a big space. I didn't take any real pictures other than a handful. I'll include some images on the screen. I only took two quick pictures there. Uh, that was late morning, early afternoon when I was there. I hung out for a couple of hours, but mostly it was just chatting a little bit. I did look around the tables briefly. A lot of the stuff was kind of the thing that you would expect as far as a lot of modern stuff. But I will say that in scanning through a lot of it, what they did as part of the promotion for this specific one is they called it like a world's collide thing where they talked about, you know, bringing TCG and sports cards together. But I, I did think it was kind of funny because they have done a TCG only uh, card show, which I think did fairly well with them foot traffic wise. But it's always kind of funny because for me, like a lot of these card shows, especially now, there's nothing preventing TCG dealers from setting up. But I guess, you know, calling it a world collide thing and kind of really encouraging it and playing it up, I think was probably good for marketing purposes. I can tell you that the foot traffic when I was there was actually quite good and hopefully you get a little bit of a sense of it from the pictures and it stayed pretty steady during that time period that I was there again, late morning, early afternoon through lunchtime. I was able to hang out and chat with some folks. Uh, I went off to have some lunch outside uh, because there's a couple of spots and a couple of plazas for some eating places nearby. And they also had a food truck there if you wanted to go and grab some stuff, which was smart. And they had some tables where people could sit and do a little bit of trading and stuff just outside of the main room, which was good. And then they were gonna have a trade night after the show. My plan wasn't to hang around there too long. I did want to kind of check out some stuff, see if I could find anything interesting and then be on my way. And I was able to accomplish that. So as far as that piece is concerned, I think it was successful. Another good show as far as at least finding something. So as long as that's the case, I'm happy to go and make a little afternoon out of it, go check it out and then head back home. Now, as far as pickups are concerned, I grabbed two things that I was able to get there during my brief uh, visit. And one of them was this, a little bit of nostalgia. So this is a 1992 OPG baseball box. So you got the Opeachy wrap there. You can see Devon White. And I want to say Rob Dibble. Obviously, it's cut off, but it's kind of interesting. You got it uh, en français, obviously, Opeachy. So there you go. And on the bottom, instead of having the panels, uh, they had a division panel, which is kind of interesting. Then you got that. Save this box. Manufactured by Opeachy. Great. And here you've got win one of 1,000 complete 1992 Opeachy Premier Baseball Card Sets. So you got to have the distinction. Obviously, this is the Opeachy that is basically a parallel of tops. And then you also had Opeachy Premier, which obviously was distinct, which is kind of interesting. And then, as I said, I showed on the bottom here, you got this going on. So I will open this up on the channel at some point. I'm going to figure out exactly formatting wise how I'm going to do it. But this is going to be kind of a fun, nostalgic thing because this is kind of early days when I was collecting baseball. I never opened uh, really any packs of Opeachy Baseball from the early 90s. I have opened some Opeachy Baseball stuff from the past and, of course, Opeachy Premier. But it'll be kind of fun to go through this, especially the 92, because it's going to have a lot of the Blue Jays that were there for the World Series teams, which is great. So let me put that right there for now. So that was a nice pickup there. I was able to get that. I think it was 35 bucks Canadian, which nothing crazy, especially for the nostalgia that I'm going to get out of it. That'll be fun. And then the second item was actually kind of cool. Uh, this one, I came across a table that had some nice autographs and memorabilia stuff. And early 2000s stuff I'm very familiar with because I was definitely involved in opening a lot of different things or at least being around when a lot of those singles were available. And this is a set I know particularly well because I've uh, put together most of the checklist for Medano for this one. And that's for the 2003-2004 In The Game Use Signature Series, which is a mouthful, but uh, a nice set, especially for that time period. And you had a ton of memorabilia cards, autograph cards and such. And I was able to find on the table this one. So this is the game used jersey, the jersey autograph of Bobby Orr. Now, if you know anything about Friday, I like to have a lot of fun with uh, resident Boston Bruins fan Eric and uh, Bobby Orr. But obviously, you know, legendary player. Now, the thing about this, first of all, you got game used piece because uh, they were all game used here for this particular product, especially this time period. Now, it is a sticker auto from in the game. But the thing about it is 
with a lot of in-the-game stuff, especially in the early 2000s, they don't tell you what the print runs are in terms of being on the card. They don't number them and they don't put anything on them for a lot of the series. And obviously this um, is graded by Beckett, which in and of itself isn't a big deal, not something that was particularly appealing, but it was fine. And you can see it's got a little crack there, but, but either way, the focus was the card. And the thing about this one is the jersey in and of itself has a print run of uh, under 100, which I don't remember the exact number. I want to say like 80, maybe 70, something like that. But when you've got the autograph version, as soon as the sticker is on it to go on top of it, it is a print run of 10. So these ones are actually extremely tough to come by. Uh, I have I spent quite a long time trying to find the Medana for this, and there are a lot of different subsets as well that include that. So gave me this piece, autograph out of 10 of a Hall of Famer, pretty solid. So a pretty good day at the office as far as that concerned. So if you're only going to pick up one card, that's not a bad example to pick up. Now, for my personal collection, it doesn't necessarily fit any of the stuff that I collect. I'm going to hang on to it for a bit, but probably by the time that this uh, video goes up on the channel, I'll at least list it on eBay and be willing to field offers on it. We'll see. Uh, if I'm able to move it, then it'll probably pay for my show and then cover my box here and my trip over. So it'll either way, it continues a little mini run of being able to make the shows worth my time to definitely go and appear and hang out for a little bit and check it out. And on the other hand, if I hang on to it for a while, then it's a great piece to have and to hang on to for a bit, especially for a set that I have a lot of fond memories of and that I spend a lot of time trying to pursue for my particular player and a great card nonetheless, which is awesome just to have in, uh, in my possession, at least for a little while. So with that said, that's it for me for now. Uh, more videos coming up on the channel uh, later on tonight. So I'm recording this on Monday afternoon. And then later on tonight, I'll be recording the podcast with the guys. And we'll probably have that episode up either late, late Monday or early Tuesday. So by the time you log in on Tuesday, you'll probably be able to see the new podcast episode. We'll hang on and talk about a couple of different things. So it's been fun to do this uh, weekly podcast. And then I'll briefly talk about my Packers and the interesting uh, way they roundabout way they managed to win a game, which is kind of fun. Otherwise, uh, more videos coming up on the channel, as I said. Uh, Friday live streams at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we talk about anything happening hobby-wise. And at some point on the channel, I will crack open this box uh, once I figure out exactly how I want to go about doing that. So that's it for me for now. Like if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much, and we'll catch you in the next one.